Well, hi everyone. My name is Jason Harrop and I'm the student pastor here at CBC. Um, and welcome to another Motivation Monday. Today we are starting a new series called It Is Written, which I'm really excited to talk about. Um, we're actually have a, a couple folks joining us over these next couple weeks. Um, but as you can tell, this is a little bit different today because uh, it's just me. Uh, Hope Lillimo, who is our student intern, she actually uh, finished up her internship and uh, she did an incredible job this summer and we're really thankful for her. Um, but she's actually going back to college now. She's down at in Virginia Beach. So Hope, if you're watching this, um, just wanna say what's up and you're awesome and thank you so much. Um, so you'll also notice that Justin's not here either. Um, that's because he is out of town this week. He's on vacay. So he is uh, um, having some much needed uh, rest and relaxation with his family. So, so today, guys, you're stuck with me, but it's all right because you're in good hands. I got you guys. Um, I was about to do an Allstate commercial, but I'll, I'll stop there. I won't do that to you guys. Um, but I'm excited because this is a new series. You're actually going to hear from a bunch of different people over the next couple weeks. Um, but this week, I kind of want to join you guys and just kind of set things up a little bit to give some context um, behind this series. Because the series is called It Is Written, and um, that comes from Matthew chapter 4. Um, and it's, a, it's an interaction that takes place between Jesus and um, Satan, uh, the enemy. And uh, this takes place very early on in Jesus' ministry as he's starting it up. And um, he basically goes into the wilderness and uh, Satan tries to tempt him three different times. So I want to share this uh, with you real quick. We'll talk about it a little bit. And there's some, uh, I think, some good takeaways that kind of set up this series. And, and hopefully it is an encouragement for you. So in Matthew 4... Um, uh, verses 1 through 11. So if you've got your Bibles with you, your Bible app, go ahead and open up so you can follow along. It'll also be on the screen. And so in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, it says this, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The, temptation came, or the tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell the stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written. Remember that. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus answered him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and the angels came and attended to him. So, this is uh, an interesting um, conversation that's taking place, um, you know, in Jesus, um, where he's being tempted by Satan on three different times, um, three different things. And each time Jesus responds with the simple phrase, it is written, and then references an Old Testament passage um, to each temptation. And so for me, as I was thinking about that, I thought that was an interesting approach and a, and a helpful approach as we think about temptations. Whether you realize it or not, that we do live in a world where, yes, there is God, but there is also uh, the enemy. There is Satan the, or the devil, you know, um, who's out there. And um, they call him the deceiver, the tempter, for a reason. Now, for us, as we're reading this passage, it's really easy to tell that he's tempting Jesus, right? Because it, it lets us know, or, hey, you know, the enemy, he's coming to tempt Jesus. But a lot of times... Um, the devil doesn't make it so obvious. He doesn't make it so easy to, for us to know whether or not he's tempting us, right? He wouldn't be called the deceiver if he wasn't very deceiving. And so as we think about it in our everyday lives, you know, the enemy is out to, to tempt us. And for Jesus in this moment, right, he was in the wilderness. He was in the wilderness and he was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, all right? That's a long time, I don't know. And so it makes clear in the verse, after doing all that for that long, he's pretty hungry, all right? I don't know about you guys, but I'd be starving at that point. I'd be looking for some steak and potatoes immediately, okay? There's got to be something in the wilderness there. And so he's exhausted, he's hungry. And so the enemy, he plays off that and says, you know what, I'm going to try and tempt him based off his physical weakness of not having food. And as I was thinking about that, that's a very interesting way that the enemy tries to deceive and tempt us. And I think as he does that, he also does that to us. And we see that through scripture and many times where 
Um, scripture warns us about how Satan loves to get us by tempting us, by going after our weaknesses, our flaws, our insecurities, especially those to try and trip us up and make us fall down or make us make a poor decision or treat someone poorly. But by doing that, by deceiving us and tricking us. But for me, as I was thinking about this passage, I love though, even though Jesus, yes, he was hungry. Yes, he was you know, physically you know, a week from not having that because yes, he was fully God, but he was also fully man. So he's struggling in this moment and he's hungry, but he has something to help him. And that something is the word of God. It is scripture. And that's a beautiful thing as I think about that because he's able to overcome those temptations. He's able to like, you know, no, I'm not listening to that. That's a trick because I know what God's word says. And I think about that in my own life and I, and I think about for all of us, you know, that's, that's a great thing to think about when we are tempted. You know, for all of us, we go through a wilderness at certain times in our lives. Maybe you went through one in your past. Maybe you're going through right, one right now. I know for a lot of us, we're in this pandemic right now. And it's, you know, at first we thought it was just going to be, you know, a couple of weeks, maybe a month. And that turned into months after months after months. And it's been a very difficult time. There's a lot of things that are just not in our control right now. And it's difficult and it's, it's frustrating. It, and it's brought up a lot of emotions. Maybe at certain times you've been sad, you've been anxious, you've been angry and frustrated. And, you know, obviously now it looks like school is going to be online for, for this fall semester. And so I'm sure that's brought a lot of emotions and frustrations. It's a very difficult time for all of us as we go through this pandemic in this wilderness-like experience where we're struggled. And in those moments, there's a lot of things that can come out of it when we're going through difficult times. Sometimes our insecurities, our fears, uh, um, certain things are, are brought up that we're not proud of. And those things come out in the way that we act, the way that we make decisions, and the way that we treat people. Or maybe for you, maybe it's not so much the, the, the pandemic, but maybe it's a certain relationship or a friendship that's just gone south and you've been really tempted, maybe in a relationship to do some things that you know you shouldn't do, or, or maybe in a friendship, it's kind of been at odds because of some th certain things that have happened. So we all have certain things going on in our lives, certain things that are tempting us, and, and the enemy loves to capitalize on these moments when we're not, when something is out of our control, when something's not going the way we want it to, Right? He loves to tempt us, to distract us, to pull us away from what God wants us to do, right? Because when Jesus went into the wilderness, he went there to pray and to fast, to grow closer to God. But through that, God, uh, the enemy also wanted to come in. He's like, I don't like that. I don't want God and Jesus like, to be you know, strengthened in, through this time. I want to push them away. And so that's what the enemy loves to do. For me, as I was thinking about this, uh, there's a, a passage that comes to mind, and it's in Psalm. Psalms 119, verses uh, 105. And I'd love to just share with you, because I think it, it's, it's a really simple um, statement, but I think really practical in how we live it out. But it's Psalms 119, verse 105. Um, and it says this, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Say that again. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. I love the, you know, the imagery it's using there, talking about the lamp and how it illuminates someone's feet so they can see where they're going and their path. I love that imagery. And for me, it makes me think of a, a particular um, thing that I had to do growing up uh, that I did not enjoy doing at all. Um, but growing up, I had a certain chore, and that was taking out the trash. Now, for me, I grew up out in the country, um, out in the woods, and so there's a lot of trees, a lot of... Um, for me to get to the end of this driveway where I had to go with this trash can, it would take a good while, you know, pulling that trash can for about five minutes to get to the end of the driveway. For me, though, what was difficult and what uh, sometimes, you know, as much as we don't like to admit this, sometimes we can be a little scared of the dark, right? Because sometimes it's not so much the fact that it's dark, it's about the things that you hear around you when it's dark, right? So for me, you know, I hear some kind of brushes, some, some leaves on the side, or maybe, maybe it was just a squirrel or an acorn dropping or some branch, but for me, I'm thinking a worst case scenario, all right? You know, I'm thinking maybe it's a bobcat, maybe it's a bear, you know, something like that, or a fox. Um, and so for me, I was really kind of nervous in these moments, and I couldn't really see anything. There was no light around me. It was a very dark um, at night. And as always, for some reason, you know, I, know I think back, I probably could have done it early in the day, but I always had to do it Thursday night. That was when I would go out. And so I'd take the trash can all the way to the end. And as soon as I got that trash can to the very end of the driveway, I'd place it there, and then I would book it and run as fast as I can back down the driveway to get to the, my house. 
But one of the things that helps me in that time is I couldn't really see much around me. And sometimes, you know, you'd always hear something going around. Um, you can be very fearful. But one of the things I did know and I did have in that moment was at the end of the driveway, there was a light. There was a, you know, a, a street light. And it was just one. It was just a very faint light because uh, I live right next to this k campground. And so there's just one light there. And that's the only light that was going on, right? Because whenever there's no light, the absence of, of light is darkness. There is no light. But for me, I could see that, and it was just that shining beacon, like, all right, I'm going towards that. I'm using that. It is illuminating my path just a little bit, just enough to where I can get to the end of the driveway. So for me, that was that big thing I looked to to help me get from one place to another, in spite of all the fears and all the things that are going around me. And as I think about that, and I think about this passage here, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path, I think about God's word, right? I think about sometimes in our lives, we have a lot of things that are going on around us, a lot of distractions or temptations, and it can be really difficult and fearful or, 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 or you know, lead you to do some things that maybe you don't want to do or you're afraid of because of the, what might happen, what could happen. And sometimes it's easy to get distracted, to fall into those temptations. But when it talks about the word, God's word, scripture, being that lamp for your feet to give you direction for your life. I love that, and that's such a great encouragement. And I don't know about you guys, but I found that to be very true in my life. Certain scripture and passages that I would lean on in difficult times that helped me through difficult times. Certain things where I was tempted to go one way or the other to make a poor decision, but I would remember God's word to help me through difficult times. And yes, sometimes when I didn't lean on God's word and I would fall down the wrong path. But one of the things I've always found is that God's word is helpful. It is that beacon, that light that can help you make the wise choices in very dark places in your wilderness. So I was thinking about that and I was just, you know, kind of going through this, it is written and, and reading this uh, Matthew 4 and then also this uh, Psalms 119. I was just really encouraged and, and I just have two thoughts for you as you kind of go into your week and, and I hope that they're an encouragement for you as you're going through whatever wilderness that may be for you or temptation or maybe it's something that will come in the future because chances are you're going to go through some difficult times in your life. But the first thing is this, study God's word so you know God's word. You know, we talk about this idea, yeah, you know, God's word is, you know, a lamp for your feet and your path and that's great and it's really good imagery and it's a cool thing to put on, you know, maybe your Instagram bio, but in order to really have that be a benefit for you, to actually have God's word to be a light for your path, you've got to actually know God's word. You've actually got to spend time in it, reading it daily, trying to, to understand it and to learn more about it because there's so many good things in here. There's so many uh, amazing stories and, and truth that can help you in your everyday life. But a lot of us, sometimes we take it for granted and we don't take time studying it. And so that would be the first thing. You know, if, you, if you want some help, if you want some direction in difficult times in your wilderness, go to God's Word. Study it. Make it a part of your life. And as you do that, the, the final thought I would have is when you're in the wilderness, lean on God's Word for direction. And that's kind of the bottom line, right? When you're in the wilderness, when you're struggling, when you're going through a difficult time, lean on God's Word. That's what Jesus did. When he was tempted, when he was starving, when he was struggling, he leaned on God's word to overcome those temptations, to overcome that struggle, because he had his eye on the prize. He knew where he was going, and he wasn't allowing those distractions, those temptations to push him away from it. And I think that's a great posture for us to lean on as well, to go after what God has for us. And a great way to do that is through God's word. So my encouragement as we start this series is to start digging into God's Word. And over these next couple weeks, I'm really excited because we're going to hear from some different folks, um, some students and leaders who are going to share you know, a favorite passage of theirs that really helped them through a difficult time. And they're going to share you know, you know, the, the circumstance that was going on and how it's helpful for them. And, and hopefully through that, uh, maybe it's an inspiration for you, an encouragement for you to hold on to God's Word when you're in uncertain and difficult times. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. This week, um, next week, I should say, on Monday, you're going to hear from one student, uh, Carson Miller. I'm really excited. He's a senior this year, going to be a senior this year. And um, he's going to be sharing a, just a word of encouragement, a passage that was meaningful for him and how it's helped him. So, so I love for you guys. Definitely check that out next week um, as we kind of get going with this It Is Written series. So 
Um, I hope, though, as we kind of start this off, that this uh, word has been an encouragement for you um, as we get going with this It Is Written series. So hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.